Yo, what is up guys, it is Sweep here, and I finished 114th last season. Um, it is 5 in the morning for me right now, so if I do look a bit tired and do sound a bit tired, I'm sorry for that. Um, but what I know is that Supercell is going to be releasing an update today, and I don't want to be asleep and lose all my replays before I make this video. So yeah guys, I'm going to be going over some of my best replays of last season that got me to 114th in the world. And yeah guys, I hope you enjoy. So take care. Alright, so for the first replay we're going to be going against Grimoka, Grico, you guys don't know who that is, he's a great player, and he had a pretty good season as well, so let's hop into this replay. Um, the Sparky deck I was using is really kind of a snipe deck for this deck, honestly, that's why I made it, it's the snipe graveyard, all kinds of bomb tower decks, the Earth's Kick was really good on ladder earlier in the season, but towards the end it kind of got rough, which is unfortunate. As you can see I had a weird starting hand, I wish I had musky, so I could probably, uh, Play my musky to stop both the uh, wall breaks, but I'm forced to let one connect without spending too much elixir. So he's gonna go minor here with the bats. Very good play against him, and I'm gonna commit a lot of elixir. Let's see what he decides to do here. We just goblins, right? Yeah. So I'm still down one, and I'm wondering. I'm curious what he does here. All right, so he leaks. So I play a musky in the back. He goes for a pretty aggressive play right here so I'm gonna do an alright play and uh, yeah he played this really well that's what I can remember yeah he just took control of the game right there which is really well played by him but like I said the matchup is still in my favor so even if I do have a rough start once I get my ideal cycle down with like sparky goblin giant and earthquake maybe with a mini pack in there as well then I feel like it would be on like it's he can't stop it it's, it's a unstoppable offense for this matchup see so yeah, now that he's Valka to cycle I'm not really worried about any of the pushes he can make so I'm free to Sparky in the back which I assume I do yes all right so I think I eat this and then I go all out on offense since he already has a pretty good start on that tower he plays his bomb tower early because the cycle is a bit weird so this is what I mean by an ideal offense so you can see my hand right now I have Goblet Giant Earthquake and I think no matter what I'm taking this tower in this push I just earthquake here. Can't really defend that. Um, it's really weird that he has a snowball. So, yeah. Look at that. Everything dies. Tower down. Unstoppable offense. As you can see, he tried his best to defend it. There just wasn't much he could do. So I put my mini pick there just to kind of fix my cycle again because I didn't really want to play it in the back. So here we go again. He, I, I give him this tower because he already has so much down that if I just reset. Uh, go go to like a one one tower game. He can't really hit my king tower And we're gonna be playing same lane which is really beneficial for me when he can't do uh, split lane pressure Which is where this minor wall breaker deck shines So yeah, this is in a great position for me honestly, and he just doesn't know what to do even he's like kind of like uh, What do I play here? Uh, I feel like there's a really bad minor on his end because he doesn't really have anything to stop my uh, push um, maybe not the best Earthquake by me. I definitely could have done a better Earthquake, but yeah, you guys can just see how weird the cycle is right now. He doesn't know what the cycle. Everything he plays would probably die, and that's a Sparky hit on his king, and I do end up 3 crowning Grico. So yeah, guys, uh, let's hop into the next match. Alright, and here we go into the second match versus Logbait with KK, who's arguably one of the best Logbait players in the game. And this is a really rough matchup because you, I really have no way to kill his Goblin Barrels. As you can see here, his Goblin Barrels will always get damaged no matter what I play. It will always get damaged. That's why this match is really hard. And he does have the Rocket for my Sparky as well. So you see at the start of the game, I just kind of play like... Kind of wanting to abuse his cycle. Oh, what? Oh, okay, we're back. We're back. Sorry for that. At the start of the game, I just play really aggressive because I just want to abuse his cycle. Let's see, it kind of worked. And maybe force him to Rocket on uh, defense as well. Which would allow me to play my Sparky in the back, or even up high, because he could kind of cycle back fast since it is log bait. And you see here, guys, his it's always going to get damaged, unfortunately, and that's why this matchup's super hard. And this has probably one of the best endings of one of the matches I played ever. So yeah, uh, he decides the princess in the back. I'm probably going to respond with a musky of my own. Uh, in my mind, I thought he was going to keep that alive. But instead he decides to play his Goblin Gang, and that opens me up to use my Mini P.E.K.K.A pretty freely, which I'm gonna, you're going to see I do in this upcoming sequence. I'm going to play my Mini P.E.K.K.A, then I'll have Zap for his Inferno Tower. As you see, he has no way to stop my Mini P.E.K.K.A, and I just decided to zap that. He's going to play his Knight, but it's a bit too late. And that is going to be a Mini P.E.K.K.A on his tower for two hits, and 
it's looking like a good start for me. Until until he plays that, and I'm forced to tank a whole Goblin Barrel. But I know he's low on Elixir, so I decided to put my bats. I was hoping this would get more damage than what it did, because it really got no damage. So, looking back on this right now, um, we're about even, but I, I feel like I'm in such a bad spot, because he just has to get my tower down the rocket range, and then I'm screwed. Like, there's nothing I could do once he gets my tower in the rocket range. And I can't really build that good of a push. So I decided to musky in the right lane. Hoping he was going to rocket it. Or even maybe Prince at the bridge play. A bit dumb. But no, he's playing this smart. He's playing passive. Uh, I Goblin Giant in the back for his princess. Because it only takes four Spear Goblin hits to kill the princess. And it's usually a good play. So he does decide to play his Inferno Tower early. So I do Earthquake. And we're going to see what he does here. I decided to try to keep it alive. Not, not wanting to use my Zap. Because I want to Zap his Goblin Gang. But... He decides to wait. Smart play by him to play his Goblin Gang. And yeah. I was really hoping that Mini P.E.K.K.A. would get on the tower there. But it doesn't unfortunately. And it, it's coming down to the wire. Because I really need to get damage. I know he doesn't have anything in cycle. So I'm trying to abuse the cycle right now. So yeah. No Knight in cycle. He's forced to play Goblin Gang. And that will result in my Goblin Gang getting a couple of hits on his tower. There we go. It's looking good. I play Mini P.E.K.K.A. in the right lane. Because I know he doesn't have Princess. I could have won this game here if I just zapped right here. Looking back on it. That really kills me. And I was so nervous. I'm like, if this Goblin Rough brings me down, which I really well could have. Oh, I was panicking. I was panicking. I, I didn't want the Prince to get hit, so I played the Bats. Goblin Giant, because I have to. I got it. it, it we're down to the final minutes of the game. Earthquake. Um, I didn't zap his tower. Zap this 81. Uh, if you guys didn't know, when it's maxed. And I get one of the luckiest Spear Goblin hits on the tower. To win the game versus KK. As you guys see that's not an easy matchup. But that's generally how you guys want to handle it. And yeah guys it works. So I'll see you guys in the next match. Alright hopping into the next match. We are versus Bridge Fam. This deck is. Should be more popular. This deck is super strong. Doesn't really have a lot of bad matchups. And it's. I'd say it's about 50-50. It does have Ewiz to hard counter my Sparky. But I also do have a mini P.E.K.K.A. from the drop on it. So yeah guys we're just going to get. I like to play really reactive. So we're both leaking. Um. I play the start. I wish I had Sparky in hand. That would have been like a two elixir Sparky because it would have killed the uh, the healer without any repercussions. But I'm forced to play a Dark Prince into that. And yeah, he's just gonna play his Magic Archer, which I don't I don't remember what I do. Yeah, okay. I'm mini pick in the back. Probably should have Ram it in the left lane. It would have been really annoying for me. But he doesn't know what I'm running yet, so he's playing this really safe. But I do decide to keep that alive because I know he doesn't really have anything that wants to take a mini pick a shot. So powerful a mini peck is honestly um i could have done a better <coughs> excuse me could have done a better zap there i gotta drink what eh. <coughs> just casually dying oh my god the only reason why i think this matchup's hard i don't really have a way to kill those magic archers because i have earthquake I don't know what just happened, boys. I'm sorry. I, my throat got clogged by something. I think it was one of the dill pickle chips I was eating that just came back up and wanted to fight me. Hey, guys. It, it's always okay to spark either. Uh, I think I can eat that, right? No, I'm going to eat that. Oh, boy. I'm I'm a mad lad for that one. I'm a mad lad. So, in my head, I'm like, hey, I got to build a push where you can't stop it. I got to play a mini P.E.K.K.A. behind this and try a tower trade because... This is another matchup where it's okay to tower trade because if it does go down to a two crown situation, I'm in the, I'm in the advantage because the only problems I have in this matchup is if it's a split lane pressure matchup and it's a one tower game. So I, I like to tower trade a lot of times versus certain matchups and this is especially one of the matchups I like to tower trade against because then that just allows me to freely play Sparky's in the back and not have to worry about him going for the left tower and pressuring me so yeah guys still defending that there's still a i'm still up right now so i'm like okay i can spark in the left lane I, he can't punish me in the right lane right now if you guys see his hand so i'm like okay that's just gonna he can't do anything what's gonna do fireball that fair enough fireballs that not a good play um i feel like i got so much value here i don't see how he takes my tower really um i'm gonna have such a intimidating push coming down as well 
Unfortunate that that kills my uh, my Sparky, which is that. But yeah, he's gonna have to, he's gonna be forced to do that. And I'm like, okay, he's low on elixir. Uh, not much could really stop this. And this is how weak Goblin Giant is. Look at this. Oh my God, Goblin Giant is so weak. Um, I'm, I just got to cycle now. My, my deck cycles pretty quickly, so you guys need to see me do my little fast cycle thing. Um, you predict someone to musky in the pocket. I knew he was going to do that, so I'm just waiting. Cycle, 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 zap. And yeah, guys, that's usually how you handle Bittersham. Don't be afraid to tower trade. If they hit opposite lane with a uh, Ram Rider Bandit, just spark in the back. Don't worry about it. Well, let it go. Let it go. Tower trade with them, you'll be in a way better spot. Going into two times, three times. So, yeah, guys, let's hop into the last match of this video, and I'll see you there. All right, so this last match is gonna be versus Moogie. Moogie is one of the best players in Clash Rail, and a lot of people think he is the best player. And you see, it's still one of the better matchups for me, and this is gonna go by really quick because he does give up towards the end. But yeah, he goes out minor wall breakers. Not a good play, but it works. It, it's really you really mess up people if they don't have the right starting hand, and it ended up working for him. See, there you go. I'm just going to decide the bats in the back and just see what happens. All right, so he places uh, that. I know I'm up Elixir, so I decided to spark you in the back. And look at this hand. He can't punish me. So he's going to be forced to place Bomb Tower early. That lets me Earthquake it earlier, and it goes down right away. And my Goblin Giant just goes for the tower. I play my Goblin Giant up higher, so his Bomb Tower does not splash the Sparky and the, uh, whatchamacallit, but yeah, he messed up right there. Man, it's, it's already a good game. Like, look at that. Just towered down. One push. One push wonder. That's what they call me. It says a wall breaker early as well. Hoping that they connect, connect to the tower. And it just it doesn't work like that. Unfortunately. But yeah, it's looking like he already gave up right here. And like I said, it's, it's a really good snipe deck. If for minor wall breakers. I feel like it's like solid 100-0 matchup. I could say that confidently because I beat Kiriko and Mugi, which are the best minor players in the game. And it, it feels good being like one of the best players in the game, to be honest. Um, the only other player that I can think is up to his skill is probably Boofmac, but I tie trade with him because he's one of my friends. I don't want to get clapped by my friend, <laughs> honestly. So, yeah, guys, let's just let this three crown happen. And uh, let me know in the comment section what other stuff you guys would like me to make videos on. I don't know if you guys like this kind of stuff, going over my replays of when I'm really focusing, crowning Elixir, kind of cycle in the matchups, and getting my analysis at the end. But yeah, guys, thank you for coming to this video, and peace out.